Good morning and welcome to Manna on Monday. What a treat it is to spend a little time with you today. And so, um, hey, let's pray and then we're going to get into some, if you will, fatherly advice. Um, lots of little advice that we've got for you today out of Proverbs chapter 3. But first, let's pray. Father, you're the place, you're the one that has the wisdom of all, all time. Lord, and in fact, you, you exist outside of time, and so you see the end from the beginning. And, and so if you do, then wouldn't it make sense for us to seek the one who knows? Because we don't know what tomorrow will bring, but Lord, you do. And so we can put our trust in you. Won't you bless our time now as we seek you in your word? Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, Proverbs chapter 3 starts out with, My son, do not forget my teaching. Then down later um, in the chapter it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Man, focus your attention on the Lord. What does his word say? What does God's word say? I can't tell you how many times when I've had to make a decision and it's like, Lord, I want to make this decision, but at the same time period, I don't want to get ahead of you. And so what I do when I need to make a decision, I go to the book of Proverbs. And in fact, what I do with the book of Proverbs is, is I'll go to the corresponding chapter number as of the date. Both the day that I'm thinking about it, the day that I'm um, considering making that decision, and I'm going to read through those chapters. And I can't tell you how many times in the midst of those chapters, God has clearly given me direction to say, yes, go forward, or no, don't go forward. And in every circumstance, every time, he has provided faithfully for me. So that, that's, you know, so can I encourage you, when it says to trust in the Lord, that's an easy way to know how to do that. Further on down the chapter, it says, honor the Lord with your wealth. Of course you do that, because I'm trusting him because he owns it all, right? Um, and so that keeps things in perspective for me. And then it says, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. If you want to hear about discipline, a few weeks prior, um, the Lord did some great discipline in my heart that I so appreciated. And it was like, Lord, I know that you are disciplining me. And so it's like, Lord, teach me. Help me to see what it is that I've missed or that I've done in error. And he is so gracious and kind to show us those things and to right us in our wrongs, if you will. But today it says, we're down in verse 21. My son, do not lose sight of these. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, and they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck. Um, then you will walk on your way securely, and your foot will not stumble. If you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. You see, when you're not caught up in worry and fear, and, and then, then you don't have to worry. You can sleep. I think people, there's a lot of times people, they can't sleep on a regular basis because they're so filled with worry. They're so filled with fear. And they're not paying attention to what they need to be paying attention to, which is what God's Word says for them on a daily basis. It goes on then, and it starts giving us some distinct direction. It's almost like you get this sit-down conversation between this wise father that's imparting this truth to his son. And not just a young son, Yes, a young son, but also a teenage son and a, a young man um, in their 20s. Um, through life, it just says, man, dad, what do you think I should do in this circumstance? Well, here's some dad advice, right? It says, verse 25, um, do not be afraid of sudden terror or the ruin of the wicked when it comes. It says, you know, like, don't be afraid in the midst of, of catastrophes. Man, pay attention. Keep your wits about you. Look at what's happening and try to bless others. Try to provide for others. It says in the very next verse, it says, For the Lord will be your confidence and he will keep your foot from being caught. You see, if I have purpose in caring for others, it's the Lord that's going before me. And I don't have to be swept up into the catastrophes of life. Um, the next verse says then, Do not withhold good from those... For to whom it is due, when it is in your power to do it. 
Bless others when you have that opportunity. I so enjoy this thing that has been going around for quite a while, and it's, it's called Pay It Forward. And some of you may have seen the movie Pay It Forward, which is a great movie. I'd recommend watching it. Um, but one of the things that Pay It Forward does is it's saying, you know what, I'm going to bless the person behind me in line at Burger King or McDonald's or what, you know, in, in our case it's Dutch bros um, and you pay for their coffee you pay for their meal whatever it is um, just to bless them and and you ask the person in the business say would you just say share a message with them just tell them say God bless you and love you love you um, but sometimes you might be in the grocery line um, and I've seen this before and it just has so blessed my heart when I see someone struggling to pay for all the groceries and then they have to start deciding, man, I need to pull this out, I need to pull that out because I don't have enough money for those things. Can I encourage you? Step up when you see that. Step into that and bless those people. Provide for those people. If God has given it to you, give it to them. It'll pay you back immensely. Um, so let's go to the next verse. And the next verse says, Do not say to your neighbor, Go and come again tomorrow. Um, I will give it when you have it with you. And so, it's, you know, the, the way I look at that is pay your bills and pay your bills early. Don't wait till the due date. I mean, if you've got the funds to pay it, pay it. That's what it's saying. Um, and, you know, and if, that's, if there's one thing that I learned from a good friend of mine, his name is Doug Strand. I think he's a very wise man. I love that man very, very much. He's taught me a lot in my life. Um, it's like, man, when you get a bill, if you've got the funds, pay it. If you don't have the funds until your next payday, pay it when you get that payday, right? But be timely about the way that you pay your bills. Um, next verse, and it says then, Do not plan evil against your neighbor who dwells trustingly beside you. You know, never deceive or take advantage of people. You know, God does not want you to be involved with um, taking opportunity to hurt someone else for what you might perceive as your gain. It's not your gain. It's actually your loss. Uh, if we go on to the very next verse, which is verse 29, it says, Do not plan evil against your neighbor who dwells trustingly beside you. You know, have a relationship of trust. Don't, don't do mean things to other people. Look for the opportunity to do things that reflect kindness. Verse 30. Do not, commit, do not contend with a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Well, that's really easy. Be careful about um, involving yourself in arguments that aren't yours. Um, but at the same time period, you can pray, and maybe there's an opportunity to bring peace to an argument. Um, but be careful with stepping into an argument that's not yours. Verse 31, do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways. You know, God wants us to choose ways that are reflective of him and his kindness. Um, so it, it just says, man, be careful about um, how you model your life. What is the way that you model your life? Is it after those that, that get all the gain that they can um, and it doesn't matter who they crush in the process? Or is it that you're, you're helping people up and you're helping people along the way? Um, let's go on to the next verse, the verse 32. For the... Um, Hang on just one second, excuse me. The devious person is an abomination to the Lord, but the upright are in his confidence. And verse 33 says, The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. You know, God is omniscient. Um, he's all-knowing. And he knows our thoughts even before we think them. And so if you, you wish and do evil towards others, you've got to remember you're actually going to start battling with the Lord because you're opposing him. You know, on the contrary, be a person that's trustworthy and that people know that you're going to be a, a person that is seeking after the welfare of others. Um, and, and let the Lord lead you to care for others. Um, 
So let's, let's keep going. Let's go to verse 33. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Toward the scorners he is scornful, but to the humble he gives favor. You know, walking humbly um, in life is great gain in my mind. I, there have been times when I have not walked humbly, and it's not been great gain. It's caused heartache and pain and and, you know, and then you got to deal with even more of a problem than what you had before. But if you walk humbly um, in life, trusting in what God's going to do, you actually gain his favor and he provides for you. The last verse here today is verse 35. The wise will inherit honor, but fools will get disgrace. What that means is, is there is an inheritance for each of us by the way in which we live. So is your inheritance dishonor or disgrace? Or is it honor and recognition of well-being? So um, might I encourage you, spend some time in um, the book of Proverbs, and I'll guarantee you that it'll bless you. God bless you, and have an awesome Monday.